really took me seriously. <laughs> and dead. But anyway, on with our competition. Speaker number five, Cindy Ann Chatham. Who else wants to make friends with numbers? Who else wants to make friends with numbers? Cindy Ann Chatham. hands. How many of you prefer words over numbers? Okay, how many of you prefer numbers over words? We're about evenly divided. That's pretty cool. Actually, I'm a words girl. I'm an editor by trade. I love numbers. I love the flow and rhythm of language. I love beautiful descriptions. But numbers and I, well, we have kind of a rocky history. And it started when I was in first grade, and my teacher, Mrs. Armstead, said, Class, who knows what one plus one is? Well, I have three older brothers, and I knew the answer to that one. Mrs. Armstead, Mrs. Armstead, I know what one plus one is. One plus one is bunny ears. <laughs> she said, Cindy, one plus one is two. Try this one. What's two plus two? And I said, oh, Mrs. Armstead, I know the answer to that one, too. Two plus two is one. And she said, how do you figure? And I said, well, my uncle ran for mayor, and he came over last night, and he said, we won, we won. <laughs> and it didn't get any better when I was in fourth grade, and I began learning about multiplication and zeros. Now, my mother would pack my lunch every day and in it she would give me a little love note and every afternoon before I ate my sandwich I would take that love note out and read it. Now my mother signed those love notes with X's and O's and I thought she was giving me hugs and kisses. Now I find out she was giving me extra homework. <laughs> well then I get to seventh grade and I have Miss Borkenhagen for my teacher. Now Miss Borkenhagen lent new meaning to the acronym MATH mental abuse to humans. <laughs> Just saying. She was a large woman, I mean really large. Her head brushed the top of the doorway of the classroom. And her sides, well let's just say she had a really large circumference. <laughs> well she starts reviewing fractions and she says, class, there is a fine line between the numerator and the denominator. And I look at her and think, Yes. And then she talks about angles and she says, this is straight angle, this obtuse angle, this acute angle. And I elbow my classmate and say, who is she to say one angle is cute and the other one isn't? <laughs> <laughs> so I get out of seventh grade and Numbers and I are not getting along very well by this time. He stays out of my area and I tiptoe around his perimeter and don't tell him but I was noticing that his roots were a little square. <laughs> and I get into Mrs. Tracy's algebra class in high school. Now Mrs. Tracy is as old as the hills and her reputation for being as hard as nails goes back three generations and she reeks of old Chanel number five. And she starts talking about zeros. Class, yesterday I told you when we talked about multiplying by zero that you could multiply any number by zero and get zero. Well, today I'm here to tell you that if you divide any number by zero, well, you just can't do it. You just can't do it. It can't be done. You can't divide any number by zero and get zero. Well, I, remember I'm a words girl, and I trophied in, deba I trophied in debate, and let me tell you what, I loved that. I was 15 years old and knew everything, so I challenged her, and I said, Mrs. Tracy, yesterday you told us that zero times zero is zero, so that by the laws of multiplication and division, zero divided by zero must be zero. And she said, oh no, oh no, agent. And I said, yes, Mrs. Tracy, it is. And I argued with her for the entire class period. Now, who would have thought that 40 years later, you could ask that very same question from the little lady in this box, and you would get a very interesting answer. Siri, what is zero divided by zero? 
Imagine you have zero cookies and divide them evenly among zero friends. How many cookies does each person get? See, it doesn't make any sense. And Cookie Monster is sad that he has no cookies. <laughs> and you are sad that you have no friends. <laughs> I tell you what, I tell you what. So I get out of high school, and I go to college, I get married, and I have children of my own, and I meet numbers again. This time, though, I'm a little bit more realistic. I mean, time has kind of taken off the edges of my points and my angles, and I'm not nearly as quick to go off on tangents. So one day, our son Lucas is doing story problems, and he calls down from upstairs. Mom! Jason has 32 candy bars. He eats 28. What does he have now? And I call up to him and I say, Lucas, Jason has diabetes. <laughs> I'll tell you what. And so even now, Numbers and I are getting a little bit uncomfortable with each other, not so sure of each other, because Numbers is always saying he's greater than, and I'm always thinking he's less than. I mean, even now when the kids do geometry lessons and they pull out the graph paper, I think they're plotting something. <laughs> well, I tell you what, Numbers and I reconciled not too long ago. And I have to tell you, he counts for far more than I ever gave him credit for. I mean, sometimes when I look at numbers, I think he's changed my life. Because sometimes my life doesn't add up. <laughs> and when those days are overwhelming, he takes what's in excess in one area and he just carries it over to another column. In fact, he has taught me how to reduce my fractions. He's taught me how to locate those missing variables. And he's taught me how to determine my absolute value. And with those skills, most of life's problems can be solved. Just yesterday, he said to me, hey, words girl, on a scale of one to 10, how do you feel? And I said, hey, Mr. Numbers, I gave the scale away a couple of weeks ago. But I tell you what, since you taught me how to decrease my pounds per square inch and increase the volume of my mental capacity, I want you to know I now function at 100%. <laughs> 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 <laughs>